Hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to the the funny uh monthly Atlanta DIY music roundup. It's not what I call the videos, but um first of all, thank you all so much for the uh very very positive response to the first video. Uh, I honestly wasn't expecting that, and it's very good motivation to keep going. You'll have to excuse my voice a little this time. I'm I'm a little congested. Uh, been under the weather, but, you know, we ball. The second thing I want to get out of the way is I missed a lot <laughs> last month. I think there were like 14 things that I missed, um, which brings up the total amount of things that I was supposed to talk about last month. I believe it's equal to the amount of things I'm talking about this month now. So, sorry. Uh, if if you're, if, if I missed your band, uh, I'm really sorry about that. Um, just one guy. And again, I, I upgraded my, um, research for this month. So hopefully if I do miss anything this month, it shouldn't be as drastic as it was last month. I'm also not going to talk about everything that I missed in great detail. Um, just for the fact that there are so many things that I have to get to this month. Um, this video is long enough already. I don't want it to be even longer talking about things that didn't even come out in November. And I completely recognize that that's entirely my fault. Um, again, sorry. Uh, I'll keep an eye on all of you and make sure I get the next thing that you put out. But in the meantime, let me just quickly cover everything that I missed. I'll just, I'll mention it. Um, by name, and it's all of it has been added to last month's Spotify playlist, if it's on Spotify. So um, if you already added that playlist, and then before this video went up, you noticed that that playlist suddenly grew, that's why. This is all things that I missed. I will be better about it in the future. Um, this video is better about it. Um, there are almost, I think there are double the amount of releases in this video than there were last video, so... Progress. Um, but the things that I missed, and again, they're all on the Spotify playlist. Um, uh, the new Mallbang single, Gutter. Uh, the new Atticus Roness album, Square One. The new Spider House single, Haunt. The new Outfield Clovers, Outfield Clovers single, Mid Movie Friend Fight. Uh, the new Rubber Utter album, Pinprick Fuck You. The new Squeamish single, Cut Down. The new The Normas album, The Night Before. The new Trash Club single, Burn Up, Burn Down. The new Chick Wallace single, Birdhouse. The new Dinner Time single, Cuidate, cu cu Fuck. <laughs> the new Come Senor album, Come With Us. The new CD Rom Com EP, CD Rom Com Part 1. The new Kyle Lewis is a Boring Name single, Pills, Pills, Pills. And the new. <laughs> The new Bice single, ADHD. And before you ask how I missed the new Bice single, I don't know. <laughs> I listened to it when it came out last month, the month before, and I liked it, and I just forgot to add it. <laughs> Sorry, Bice. Um, I think what happened is um, Big Yellow and Back to Earth also dropped singles, but not in October. So I, for some reason, conflated that with, oh, Bice must have also not dropped a single in October. But they did. Um, they did. And it was ADHD. So, sorry. Um, again, sorry to everyone that I just listed off that I missed. Again, I'll get you next time. And before I get into it, um, just want to remind everybody, uh, I don't have things to say about every release that came out this month. So if I don't really have anything to say about your release, doesn't mean I hated it. Uh, just means that there wasn't much to say beyond maybe I liked it smile. So don't get discouraged if I don't talk that much about your release. Um, I have my own tastes uh, that I have to be honest about. And it's it's all just my opinion at the end of the day whether I like it or not. Um, what's more important is that I hope that I can point people towards your band even if I don't say that much about it. So with all that out of the way, yeah, let's let's get into the uh the November releases, shall we? 
Um, and if I if I miss your band, um, if you put out something this month and I don't talk about it, sorry again. <laughs> I'm just one guy. Thankfully, uh, most everyone whose stuff I missed uh, has been very normal about it. Uh, so really appreciate all of you uh, bands in this in this funny local scene that we have. Um, but anyway, let's get freaking started. Uh, that's the wrong hotkey. There we go. Uh, up first, on November 1st, uh, this new Internet Islands single, Speedrun. Indie rock, alt-pop kind of thing. Uh, I like it a lot. It's very different from the typical stuff that gets put out in this scene, especially under this genre. Um, it has a very, very nice progression to it. Uh, the tension built throughout is paid off very satisfyingly uh, at the end. It's not the kind of thing that I would typically associate with the word speedrun. Um, certainly, I, if, if you were if you told me that there was a track named Speedrun and you were like, "Oh, it's this very smooth, like almost sensual kind of song," I probably I probably would be like, "That's interesting." <laughs> but I really like this song. Um, would definitely recommend this uh, if you are um, a fan of a very very smooth, uh, slowly building kind of music. Uh, up next, this new Golden Habits single, Had Enough. Uh, it's a blues rock, kind of psychedelic rock thing. Uh, it rocks. Uh, has a very excellent groove to it, and it moves around a lot from part to part. It almost feels like kind of retro, like something you'd hear on the radio in like the 60s or 70s. Um, but it's still pretty fresh and exciting. Um, I've had my eye on this band for a while. And this is probably the best thing that they've put out so far, or at least my favorite. Um, so definitely check it out. Highly recommend. Um, oh, that was on November 3rd, by the way. Wow. Got to remember that. Uh, up next on November 3rd still, uh, this new Coffin single, Make It Stop. Coffin's back. Um, it's no, more agrotech, uh, industrial metal kind of stuff. Um, but this is... Uh, this this one's a little different. Um, this genre isn't typically for me. Uh, I I won't. I'm not going to be ashamed to admit I have my own tastes and and biases and stuff like that. But um, I actually kind of like this. If you're not typically into this kind of music, I would definitely check this out. Um, it's pretty driving and has a compelling enough main hook to uh, retain interest throughout the whole track. And there's also a house break um, midway through the song that I didn't see coming at all, but I think was really tastefully done. This new single is kind of getting me excited for the future of the Coffin project, so uh, definitely check this out. Um, oh, this new Desmond Myers single, uh, Take a Bow. Uh, Singer-songwriter, pop soul, uh, very, very lovely track. I love this song. <laughs> I'm not going to beat around the bush. I hadn't heard of of this guy before um, until I saw this single had come out. Um, but his voice is damn near, like, d just downright in, uh, angelic. Um, his delivery is is very passionate and, and heartbreaking at points. It's um, It complements the lyrics very, very well about throwing in the towel when the time is right, too. And the accompanying instrumental is is upbeat enough well, upbeat is kind of a strange word, but it's the only one I can think of uh, to not make the song completely depressing, but it still operates in this like somber space uh, so that you don't like forget that this is definitely it's sort of a melancholy kind of track. I could very easily see someone crying their eyes out to this song, and I I am a big fan. I didn't I didn't expect to like this as much as I do. I'm going to be completely honest, but I do highly recommend if you are a fan of um soul pop, pop soulful pop pop soul whatever how, how are you shut up all right i don't know how to say words um up next this new daylily song uh then how do you explain the dead unicorns uh acoustic emo track uh check it out if that's something that you might be interested in uh, up next uh this new Bathe Alone single. We're still on November 3rd. A lot of stuff came out November 3rd. New Bathe Alone single, Archive 81. It's a dream pop uh, kind of track. I absolutely love the chorus on this song. Um, I think this project could put out some really good shoegaze if they wanted to. Um, if they already have, someone please tell me. Uh, because I would very much like to listen to it. 
Uh, up next on November 6th, um, this new Revival Season track, Pump. Very fun, very energetic. Um, I would highly recommend if you are into Southern hip hop. Um, on November 7th, this new Omni track, uh, Exacto. It's kind of Cheek Face adjacent, if you're familiar with the band Cheek Face. Uh, kind of indie rock that like leans towards post-punk as well. If you like Cheek Face, this song is definitely for you. It's very peppy, uh, very fun. I like it. Uh, up next, this new Lunar Vacation EP single, kind of. Christmas, baby, Cle- baby, please come home. It's Christmas music, so if you, if you rock with Christmas music, absolutely go for it. I think uh, skating is probably the highlight from, from this. Uh, it's four songs. I'm not sure if skating is an original or not, um, but uh, if it's not, I still like it the best. Next, we have this new 15,000 Guns album, Teratoma. It's a noise rock, uh, post-hardcore, just big album. <laughs> Uh, this is exactly the kind of music that I would expect a band called 15,000 Guns to make. Uh, it's uncomfortable, it's off-kilter, uh, but above everything else, it just goes hard. <laughs> I really like this album. Uh, it's great, has a lot of styles, covers a lot of ground. Some of it is more shoegazy, some of it is more post-punk kind of stuff. But the unifying theme that ties everything together is a very palpable, anxious energy. It sounds like what it feels like to overthink every little interaction you had with someone, and you don't talk to that person anymore. It's a very helpless feeling listening to this record, and that is accentuated by the uh, wide variety of not only genres that this uh, album covers, but also with how the vocals are delivered. They range from whispers to uh, bassy mutters to just like all out frantic screaming and animalistic yelping. It's very thrilling uh, as the next track cues up and you're like, what it, What are they gonna do next? <laughs> Pink Drink is probably the best example of this like wide variety of just like bonker shit that they do. The track is insane. Um, it just, takes a turn that i would have never guessed and it's like super uncomfortable but really compelling this record is also a really impressive display of musicianship um i'd like to point you to the tracks uh gourmet sabzi i hope i pronounced that correctly um that song is genuinely fantastic uh it might be one of my favorite singles of the entire year um and the two main riffs that like kind of intertwine with each other cannot be easy to keep up throughout the whole song but the way that those two riffs with how technical and like difficult to pull off they are they really help make the explosion into like this shoegazy chorus like really work love that goddamn song but there's not a bad song here um want to also highlight the blade goes deeper i love you more i think is what it's called the opener is just it's like getting punched in the face. It's awesome. I highly recommend this album for people who are fans of music that sounds like it's always on the verge of explosion, even during its explosions. So definitely check this record out. Loved it. Um, up next, uh, same day, November 10th, uh, this new Tarot Cat single, Foreign Body. It's a kind of hypnotic song. I wasn't sure how I felt about it, when it started, but it definitely got me by the end. So I would check it out. Uh, indie pop, dream pop kind of thing. There's a lot of dream pop in this scene. I found out this month. Um, this new, uh, same day, this new Suter single, Sleight of Hand, uh, pop rock, alternative rock, uh, kind of big music, I guess. Uh, check it out if that sounds interesting. Uh, up next, this new uh, Red Eye Orchestra single, Great Divide. Uh, I guess I would call it like country pop. Um, very uncommon to hear in this scene. So definitely, uh, if that sounds intriguing, check it out. Uh, this new Future Self single, Shine On Me. It's a uh, pop rock, uh, kind of Coldplay core a little bit. So if you're into that, check it out. Um, same day still, a lot of stuff came out November 10th. Uh, this new Reason To Hate demo. Uh, three songs, Demo 23, uh, Beat Down Hardcore. If you're into 
hardcore, you'll probably like this. So check it out. Up next, November 11th, this new Scarlet Saturn album, What a Time to Be Alive. Uh, it's a noise pop uh, emo project, but also ventures into like post-rock territory. Very, very good. I liked it a lot. Um, it's equal parts harsh and, and beautiful, depending on the track, and sometimes within the same track. I think one of the most impressive parts about this record is how it opens with two seven-minute just monsters of songs and somehow doesn't have major pacing problems. It's kind of hard to pin down uh, because it just covers a lot of styles throughout its its runtime. It doesn't feel random because everything kind of stay like you could, I think you could reasonably call every song on this project emo. With how wide the emo genre has become lately, I think this album definitely fits within that genre, within that uh, um, umbrella. And it's really sad, <laughs> but it's very good at being sad. Um, it kind of reminds me of like Weather Day or Asian Glow type stuff. So if you're into those artists, I would check this out. I'm definitely into both of those artists. I would check this out. My favorite tracks are uh, Cognitive Disarray, Two Complete Copies, I Keep Screaming But God Won't Answer, Colby, and Life is Beautiful slash Cry Bully. Um, so again, check this out. Shout out Scarlet Saturn. Up next on November 14th, this new Ham Bear single, debut single, I think. I wish you would crash your car so I wouldn't have to talk to you anymore, which felt that. Um, this new emo song, uh, despite the violent song title, this is kind of a lovely listen. <laughs> I like it a lot. Definitely check this out if you're an emo fan. Uh, this kind of this encapsulates the uh the feeling of laying in your bed with the lights off and staring at the ceiling um very well so if you like music that makes you feel like doing that then definitely check this out up next this new world's greatest dad single concrete a love song it's a power pop single i thought multiple times throughout this song that they were going to play the buddy holly riff <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, that's really on me, honestly, but um, check this out if you like World's Greatest Dad. Um, up next, this new Frigga 5 single, also a debut single, um, Restless Eyes. It's an alternative rock uh, grunge kind of song. I am going to keep my eye on this band, definitely. I think this is a pretty good debut single, and I'm excited to see where they go next from here. Um, up next, November 17th, new Bice song, Grifter. By the time this video has come out, uh, the new Bice album has been out already. So if you're sad that I missed ADHD in my last video, you are going to wish that I would shut the fuck up about Bice next video because goddamn, um, this song is fantastic. Uh, I loved ADHD as well. And, uh, the main riff of this song is like really infectious. Um, it's very bouncy and the the two and like the the intertwining guitar parts give this song a a very palpable sense of movement almost like the song is like moving around you and like just circling you it's a very interesting feeling to listen to and the uh the drum beat the this the drum beat like switches towards the end of the song from like a standard beat to a two step kind of beat and then like this song just jams out from there. It's so good. So good. Um, I went completely nuts to this song at the the Big Yellow Bice release show Spectacular, which was one of the best shows I've ever been to in my whole life. I wasn't even going to go that crazy. And then uh, Nico from Big Yellow, um, like I was singing along and then I looked over and I saw Nico was singing along and then Nico started jumping and then I started jumping. And it was all over from there. I really can't get enough of this song. Um, fuck Bice. Love Bice. Bice rocks and rolls. Don't ever forget it. If you don't listen to this song, you're stupid. Um, up next, this new, uh, same day, November 17th, uh, this new Back to Earth album, uh, Death to the Earth Boys. Um, this is an interesting one. It's a very interesting one. Back to Earth hasn't been... Uh, the, the last stuff that they put out before this year was i believe in 2021 with that uh with that album that sync which was like a surf punk kind of thing 
which I liked. I liked that album. Uh, but th- this album is a like alternative metal, uh, also new metal kind of thing. But in addition to this uh, dramatic shift in sound, they've also had a big lineup shift. Um, the band used to be up to six members, depending on the song, and now it's just four of them. And from that four, only three of them are from that lineup. Worth noting that this is partly due to Nico and Alex uh, leaving in favor of fleshing out Big Yellow more, and it was uh, amicable. Uh, everyone in Back to Earth and Big Yellow are still friends, so don't worry about all that. I think this um, new lineup and new sound largely works on this album. There are parts, I'm not going to lie, where I wasn't super into it, but I think the heavier that this band goes, the better the songs are, even if the production doesn't always rise to the level of the song. When this band is at their best, they are striking a really interesting balance between alt metal and new metal, and um, that is a very interesting direction that I want them to keep going in. Uh, Take the song Leroy, which is just a crazy ass banger. The the main riff that it has is is good enough to make every new metal fan within a five mile radius just start beating the shit out of each other. It's awesome. The progression that it undergoes is also really compelling. Vocal performance by Brandon is also really good. Um, and another highlight in this in this vein on this album is. 32C, which is one of my favorite songs of the whole year. Um, if you thought the main riff on Leroy was good, buddy, <laughs> listen to 32C, man. That That is my favorite song on the record, and it is the uh, purest distillation, in my opinion, of this song, of, of the best case scenario of this new sound that the band is going for. I think 32C is... Um, in my opinion, I think that is the blueprint that the band should follow. It feels like you've been transported to a room full of hazy LED red walls, and you don't know how you got there or how to get out, but Brandon Wallace is sprinting full force at you. It <laughs> it rocks. But uh, where this album kind of loses me is on the softer tracks. Um, I don't think that those songs are necessarily executed the best um but i could also be just crazy because the most popular song from this album and by the band in general on their spotify is no solution which is my least favorite song but a lot of people seem to connect with that one so um don't listen to me (laughs) i'm stupid and you shouldn't listen to me i think this band has room to grow before they really hit their stride with this with this new change in sound but there's absolutely nothing wrong with that i think they are uh, as i said i think they're at their best when they're hitting a, a danceable moshable balance and they're just like ripping these insane riffs and and going absolutely fricko mode and there's definitely plenty of that on this record so def so check this out uh if you're looking for some new interesting metal um i I recommend this record a lot. Um, Shout out Back to Earth. I hope they keep going. Up next, this new Malleus Incus Stapes album, uh, Organic Empire. It is a lot um, for eight tracks. It has a Nirvana cover and closes with like a stomp clap kind of thing. So if that sounds interesting to you, check it out. And up next, uh, this new Pinkest single, Catholic Spain. Um, Pinkest hasn't released anything since 2021, so this was very exciting to see. It's a indie rock, uh, kind of neo-psychedelia kind of thing. Um, it's very interesting. There's a lot going on with it, and I'd check it out if you wish that MTM, that MGMT would yell more. Uh, if you want to know what I mean by that, then check out the song. I think it's very good. Uh, up next, this new, on, um, November 24th, uh, this new Lorraine EP, An Autumn Evening. It's not really new. It's a 10-year re-recording of this EP. Uh, it's post-rock, kind of explosions in the sky core. And I loved it. <laughs> I really like this thing. 
Um, still a very good listen despite it not technically being new. It's just as lush and, and hopeful as the cover art. So, And if you like explosions in the sky and that kind of uh, post-rock, then definitely check this out. This is for you. Um, up next, uh, this new Future Self single, Break You Down, uh, more pop rock uh, in the same vein as the last thing they put out this month. So if you liked the other song they put out this month, then check out this one. New Asymptomatics track, uh, Two Possibilities, is a pop rock, blues rock kind of thing. Um, I believe it's two songs. Um, I like the Two Possibilities single better, um, but check this out. If that sounds interesting to you. Uh, next, same day, uh, this new Babbler single, Deep Trough? I think that's how you pronounce that word. Kind of alt rock, kind of grunge. Um, goes stupid, honestly, uh, in both meanings of the term. Uh, the snare tone on this thing is really something to behold. I think you have to listen to this track yourself to see what I'm talking about. Um, I like it. I think there's a couple very cool songs, and I'll definitely be keeping my eye on this band. Up next, November 25th, this new Big Yellow album, Lo-Fi Panic. I have been waiting for this album to come out for so goddamn long that it, it feels like unreal that it's finally here. Freakcore Messiah's Big Yellow have seen fit to bless us with their debut record. Um, and it is exciting, it's very wacky. Um, they cover so much ground in only 20 minutes, and it's a very, very effective mission statement for the band. Um, that mission statement appears to be do whatever the hell you want as long as it goes insane, and they're good at all of it, and it rocks. If you heard me describe this band as Freak Core Messiahs, and you're like, what the hell is Freak Core? Um, listen to this album. I think this is the most effective distillation of what Freak Core means. You'll, you'll get what I mean when you, when you listen to this record. It's like seeing their life set, basically, is, is what this album is like when you listen to it. It's so, like, no two songs are the same. Uh, you could, I think you could call this record, like, Zoomer Core, um, just with how all over the place it is. Um, I mean, if the Zoomer Core label immediately puts you off, then don't call it Zoomer Core. Uh, I want you to listen to this record. It's very... <laughs> Listening to this record is a kind of a funny experience because um, I hope it's you, the opener comes on and you're like, oh, this is probably going to be like a post-punk kind of album. And then Heart Attack hits and you're like, oh, well, uh, Garage Punk, I guess. Maybe I hope it's you was a fluke. And then Baseball hits and you're like, all right, what the hell is going on? <laughs> um, but that is, that's why this album is so good because it covers so much ground and is so good at all of it. It's hard to pick a favorite track on this record because each one is so different and does everything so well. Um, I love at least one thing about each track. I love the dizzying aggression of theme for an angry phone call. I love the driving energy of out by Wednesday. I love the almost comforting main riff on sirens, the chorus of headache, the just how funny wake up is. Um, and everything about short end. Uh, I guess if you put a gun to my head and you were like, pick your favorite song off this fucking big yellow record right now, I'd probably say short end, but they're all great songs. And I highly recommend this record. Um, fantastic. Uh, freak core money, motherfucker. Uh, up next, November 29th, this new lilac single problems remastered, uh, alt rock. Um, I suppose. Um, Check this out if, if that sounds interesting. Um, this new Perfect Animal single, same day. Uh, Say That You Don't, Pop Rock, uh, Sunshine Pop. Kind of reminds me of, uh, I. <laughs> it's kind of a gamble, because I don't know if this band likes U2, but it kind of reminds me of Wild Honey by U2. Um, and I like that song, so I like this song. Um, so check it out. Final day of the month, um, three songs, um, up first, this new Astria single bartender, art pop, dream pop. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure how I felt about the main riff off rip, but I love 
the last minute and a half or so of this track. Um, it's really spacey and big, and I think it rules. So definitely check this out. Uh, excited to see what Astria does next. Um, same day, this new CD rom com single, Copper. Uh, hard rock. If you like Guns N' Roses, I think maybe check this out. I'm not well versed in hard rock. So if CD rom com, if y'all watch this and you're like, we're not fucking like Guns N' Roses, my bad. <laughs> That's my fault. Um, and finally, this new Veo single, um, not going to say the title because it's just the F slur, uh, but I love it. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to include this song in general because it's only on SoundCloud right now, but then I listened to it and like, not that dropping stuff on SoundCloud makes it illegitimate. But typically when an artist has like kind of a following like Veo does and then they put something out on SoundCloud only, it's kind of like they're demoing out a new idea from what I understand. Um, so I probably could have not included this and not faced the guillotine. But I included it because I love it so much. Um, it's not very long, but it's kind of shoegazy, alt-rock kind of thing. Um, and it's, damn, <laughs> it is right up my alley. I really hope Veo continues in this direction um, because they're very good at it. Um, it's the kind of shoegaze that gives you the thousand yard stare, which is exactly my shit. I love it so much. Um, I really hope that Veo is going to explore this sound more deeply because I am 100% here for it. Um, and with that, uh, that's it. That's all the singles that I could find that came out in November. Uh, all of these songs, uh, if they're on streaming, are in a Spotify playlist in the description. Uh, so please go listen to that if you want a little sampler of everything that came out in November. Um, if you're confused about where to start, because I understand this is a lot of releases, uh, I want to list off my favorites uh, that came out this month. Um, I figured I'd start doing this, except especially for high volume months where a lot of stuff came out. Because I get it, if you're being told to listen to a lot of stuff or you're told that a lot of stuff came out, it can be very overwhelming. So here's my favorites um, in order of when they came out. Um, the Internet Islands single speed run uh golden habits had enough uh desmond myers take a bow Fifteen Thousand guns teratoma scarlet saturn what a time to be alive uh ham bear i wish you would crash your car so i wouldn't have to talk to you anymore um vice grifter back to earth death to the earth boys uh pinkest catholic spain lorraine and autumn evening uh big yellow lo-fi panic and Veo F slur. <laughs> um, so if you are confused about where to start, uh, check those out. There's songs from all of those except for the Veo single because it's not on streaming uh, in that playlist that I mentioned in the description. Follow my band at Bummer Hill ATL on Twitter, at Bummer Hill on Instagram. Um, Bummer Hill is a good band. Smile, I think. Uh, listen to my podcast, I guess. It's about Fallout Boy. Um, this ain't a scene, it's a podcast. You can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. Um, and bye. <laughs>